then uh, today we're starting using clay. So this clay is from the earth. It's a combination of dirt and water, and the mineral makeup of it is what allows us to create things with clay that then once we dry them out and fire them in the kiln, they stay nice and hard. So today, um, unlike the modeling clay that we've used, this kind of clay is water-based. So modeling clay is oil-based, which means it doesn't dry out, um, and that's why we are able to use it over and over again. Where this clay has water in it, which means that the opposite of what was true with modeling clay is true with this kind of clay. So modeling clay was kind of tough to work with, and the more you used it and touched it, the softer it got. Well, this is the opposite. Because water evaporates and then dries out the clay, the more you touch it, the more you work it, the harder it gets, the drier it gets, and the more cracks you see. So as you can see, I've been adding a little bit of water to my clay as I work with it. Now, the other thing that you want to make sure is that you don't add too much water. It's kind of like the Goldilocks theory. You don't want it too dry and you don't want it too wet. My rule of thumb is anytime the clay looks shiny, kind of like that, that's too much water because you do want it to be able to hold shape and form as we're going to make our pinch pots today. So I'm going to work this clay a little bit. Um, this clay is a little bit older, so we need to add a little bit of water to it. It's dried out a little bit already over time. You can hear it squishing as I do that. So I'm going to demonstrate to you how to make a pinch pot. I'm going to actually get, just get a fresh piece of clay because that's a little too dry for what we need to be able to do today. So let's try a different piece. I'm going to put that back. And I can reuse that clay as long as I wet it and let it soak up some more water. So this is a clay knife. And this is about the size piece of clay that's good for a pinch pot. So the first thing you want to do is kind of make a sphere or ball with your clay. So what I do first is just sort of pinch it into the ball shape. And then notice inst I do not roll it on the table because see how it kind of gets a point to it on the edge. And we don't really want that. So the best place to roll a sphere is in your own hand. So I use the palm of one hand and I go in a circular motion with my other hand to make that sphere. And I just kind of slap it into place. Now, once I have my ball, what I'm going to do is take my thumb, place it through the middle, and I don't want to push it all the way through. We're not trying to make a donut. We want to make a pot. So you can see it's a pretty deep hole, but not through the bottom. You can kind of use your other hand to feel so you know when to stop. Next thing we're going to do is turn it on its side so that the hole is on your pinky side. Okay, it should be facing this way. Then with your other hand, I'm going to put my thumb back in and keeping all my fingers pinched together, I'm just making this motion. And I'm squeezing up with my thumb. Okay, see this thick edge is what we want to kind of get rid of and spread out. So I'm pushing up with my thumb, squeezing and letting go and just kind of turning it as I go. And those, my other hand, just kind of staying flat so that I don't drop my bowl. And then there you go. As you pinch around, you do kind of want to leave a nice edge on there. So anywhere, see how it has those little cracks? You could just rub it right out with your finger and smooth out your bowl the best that you can. Easy peasy, right? And we're going to put our name or initials, so as we don't have enough room for a whole name, our initials, which is the first letter of your first name, first letter of your last name, and your teacher code on the bottom. Then when these dry out and get fired, we'll be able to paint them and take them home. 